Leaders Global Solutions presents the Subject to Talent podcast, a hub for global workforce leaders to unleash the power of human enterprise. Listen in as we explore the most innovative and transformational topics impacting businesses today. Hi, I'm Bruce Morton, the host of Elegious Global Solutions' Subject to Talent podcast. Today, we are reissuing a past episode about a topic that is proven to be incredibly relevant to how work gets done, the Intelligent Workforce Platform. As more companies shift to a skills-based hiring model and ecosystem approach to workforce technology, such as our Acumen Intelligent Workforce Platform, becomes essential to finding, managing, and empowering your workforce. Listen in as our Executive Director of Global Technology, Ian Blake, shares insights on how the Intelligent Workforce Platform benefits organizations and shapes the future of work. Today, I'm joined by Ian Blake, and Ian has a truly global perspective with regards to how technology supports diverse and demanding workforce requirements, having completed over 150 implementations across five continents whilst also leading the development of multiple proprietary systems such as ATS, VMS, COM, and other talent tools. Ian, welcome. Thanks very much, Bruce. Excited to be here. Good stuff. Well, let's dive in. We always ask our guests the same first question, and that is, how did you get into the workforce industry, and what has your, your journey been to get you up to where we are today? Yeah, so I think like many people, I kind of fell into recruitment. Um, I finished my my technology degree, my information technology degree in uh, in South Africa, um, and uh, shortly after that, moved over to to London in the UK uh, just to further my career. And um, after a few weeks uh, in London um, with a, a really <laughs> a disappointing job, should I say, um, I uh, I was. Fortunately, sat next to somebody at a pub one afternoon and uh, had, had having a chat and uh, mentioned what I did, and she handed me a business card. and And two weeks later, I started in a in a staffing firm in, in the in the technology space. And it was just a fortuitous conversation at the right time uh, for a, for a company that was was hiring in, in its technology department. So um, at that stage, had really no exposure at all to recruitment or recruitment tech, um, and it was my first uh, one of my first actual. Jobs. So, uh, really started at the ground ground floor um, as a as a trainer and and worked in um, trying to help embed a, a global CRM uh, and very quickly moved into the implementation team, which took me um, very fortunately all around the world implementing uh, that CRM and and got me really to c- cut my teeth in recruitment tech. Um, got to understand the pressures uh, that recruiters face, that the challenges it is to to, to, to get candidates to match those roles and to get those roles filled, uh, and to make sure that the technology was, was set up correctly to support that. So I was exposed to t- recruiters and, and markets from all over Europe, the States, even back in South Africa, Australia, uh, and Asia Pac as well, which uh, gave me a huge appreciation for, um, the, the, first of all, the challenge of recruitment itself, but also the different markets, uh, the different markets and the different cultures uh, that were at play. Uh, yeah, great story, Ian. It's a tried and tested recruitment methodology in the UK. I know that, um, shutting people up in the pub. So, <laughs> Indeed. Uh, good man. Um, so to state the blindingly obvious, we're in a very challenging uh, talent market right now, and technology is obviously front and center of how organizations are trying to solve some of those challenges of identifying, attracting, and, and hiring the right type of person for the right type of work. But we know all too well that you know technology doesn't always deliver on the promise. Um, so what are some of the biggest challenges you're seeing that companies are facing today in the workforce tech space? Uh, that's that's quite right, Bruce. I think the uh, it's an age-old problem in our industry is that the, the there's, a, there's a huge gap between uh, the promises of of good technology and, and the actual outcomes that they deliver, and it's it's always been something that's that's uh, um, been easy to be attracted to. Ideas sound great, but the application of the, of those technologies and the and the actual outputs that we get has always been always been a challenge. So, therefore, a lot of decision makers are reluctant to to sort of stick their neck out and, and choose something and make decisions. Um, and also, another sort of challenge which I've seen over the years is is that getting tech implemented well, not just turned on and, and done to a basic level of configuration, but implemented well and properly integrated is is really difficult because uh, typically HR and procurement departments struggle with getting that their technologies prioritized in, in the wider spectrum of technology projects within their organizations. So it's very, um, 
it's very challenging. I think the, there's often a lot of frustration and disappointment um, around around these tools, uh, but we've got an opportunity to make things different now, I think. Right. So obviously in your role of the head of AGS technology strategy and knowing that um, businesses, they need a hiring process to make things easier, not harder. What is it? What are you building at Leaders Global Solutions right now to help solve some of those challenges? So at, at AGS, we're working on what we're calling the Intelligent Workforce Platform. And this is a concept that was introduced as part of the universal workforce model. Uh, and it's really an evolution in, in talent ecosystems and a new approach with we're taking to hold, solve the hiring challenges of our, of our customers. Uh, and essentially it's a sourcing model, which is designed to intelligently match talent to required skills. Right. And then is that for all forms of worker? Yeah, absolutely. So that, that brings, looks across the entire talent spectrum, uh, permanent contingent, gig workers, internal staff, uh, services companies, a whole lot. So we, we look at the entire spectrum. Right. And there's a lot of talk right now around talent intelligent platforms, which I know this isn't, but can you just explain to the audience the differences? Absolutely. So a talent intelligence platform is is getting a lot of buzz in the market today, and it's really a, a, an impressive evolution in uh, in the tools we use, uh, we've tr- traditionally used around recruitment. Tech, uh, recruitment. So these are things like um, uh, advances on CRMs and ATS technology that sits uh, to try to give you the more advanced and using uh, more advanced matching and using much more in, deeper intelligence to try and match candidates to jobs. Right. Um, so it's very advanced technologies and, and they are very fundamental to how businesses are looking at their talent, um, uh, talent challenge today. Now, to me, the one issue with that really is that talent intelligence platforms are still really doing at the core of it. They're still doing the same job we've always done, which is trying to match a whole candidate to an existing job. Uh, and we're using great data and great intelligence and AI, et cetera, and advances to do that. But you still have that same old problem where you're matching a candidate to a job. Now, a difference is the intelligent workforce platform is taking that to a different level. Is Before we even get to the matching stage, we have to break down work into tasks uh, and break down candidates' resumes into their core skills. Right. And then we are able to match the appropriate candidates with the tasks that need to get done. Because if you look at um, many roles across organizations, there's a lot of uh, roles that will say certain things in the job description, but the reality is it's very different when they're on the ground. And, and we look at individual roles and look at how we can potentially maximize the the activities within those roles uh, and get the most value from our workforce. And so, for as an example, um, is a developer in a, in, a, in a software development team spending the majority of their time developing, or they're being sidetracked into other avenues, business requirements gathering, or documentation, or testing, or something else that that's distracting them from their core to, core job of of developing. And therefore, are you getting, I guess, the most value for money out of that that developer? Or should you take a different angle and look? Okay, well, across our development. Uh, needs we need so many core developers and the extra tasks the administration the testing the documentation whatever it might be can be carved out into a different role for someone more appropriate so we are really getting more value for money in the workforce so the intelligent workforce platform seeks to break that down real reorganize how we look at work and then get the right matching from there great yeah i get it different approach so the you're talking now about looking at the task versus the roles. So I, I, do you think we're facing a world where job descriptions become redundant? I think so. And I think certainly CVs and resumes will become redundant in time as well because there's very much a um, – well, take take where we are today. I think we all have job descriptions, but the reality of what we do day to day and the, and the bullet points on our job descriptions often are – out of date the week we start the, right. start the role. So, so I think um, whilst they are, they have their place, and I think it's important for organisations and uh, uh, to to be able to quantify who's doing what on paper. The reality is um, they are. I don't think they're fit for purpose for the long term. So I think we'll we'll see a world one one day where job descriptions become much more high level, uh, much more indicative of what the, what the intention of those roles are, but less prescriptive about the individual tasks within those roles. Right, and I guess that means also organisations need to be better at attracting people to their organization based on how they get work done as opposed to what it says in a job description right now right so that's the way most people find a job is they go onto a job board and read the job description Mm -hmm. right but it's more than more than that 
it is more than that. And I think it's uh, certainly more and more um, candidates today are looking for what's what's outside the job. What, what are the uh, career development opportunities? What more can I learn? How can I make the most of my skills today and, and, and learn more for tomorrow? So I think we've got to be aware of that. It's on that topic then. So how does a the holistic view you just you're talking about thinking about the work and the task breaking that down getting the right people making sure that they are spending the majority of the time doing what they wanted to do and what they've learned to do mm-hmm. and have experience to do it how does that holistic view help hiring manager assess somebody on their potential versus their experience i think because you're not trying to fit people into boxes and, and try to be um uh, I guess very prescriptive about it. If you, if you are starting to look at what more value, uh, what increased value these in, these uh, new employees can bring, uh, you get the opportunity to 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 build a workforce for the future. And I think that is uh, to me where the difference lies. In is if we are using an intelligent workforce platform, we com- we can combine skill and task matching, but also a, other metrics around uh, sort of leadership potential, problem solving, numeracy, whatever those additional. Um, skills and, and competencies people have, you can add them to the mix, and you don't have to be very sort of rigid and stuck to a, a particular resume. You can you can you can expand out the way that you're looking at uh, these 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 candidates and match them more effectively to what the organisation really needs. Right. So the must have minimum five years dot 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 goes away. Yay. <laughs> I, I agree. <laughs> I think that's that's such a uh, such a dated and, and largely pointless metric because uh, we all know that. Top performers sometimes hit the skills and the capabilities within six, 18 months. They don't need five years to get where they need to get to. Well, and most of the tech we use today wasn't around five years ago, of course. So. That's, that's, <laughs> that's true as well. Madness. So um, we started off the conversation talking about how hard it can be to get technology integrated into organizations. So here we are now talking about a new, another piece of technology. So what do you see some of the challenges that organizations will face and the AGS will face when talking to organizations about introducing yet another piece of tech? Yeah, it's a good question. I think integration has been, a, I guess, the Achilles heel of many recruitment technologies over the years. And uh, it's it's vital to make these things work uh, effectively. And I think a lot of the frustrations we talked about at the beginning of this conversation are down to the fact that these tools aren't often well integrated. Um, so hence why we've been moving towards a platform approach. And, and, and platforms are an evolution from, from uh, I guess, point solutions, which are designed to solve one single problem. And a, a platform is really designed as an enabler where you can look at multiple technology options and build um, a, a, te- a technology ecosystem that, that solves a range of problems for different users. Um, and what we're trying to do here is to make this as simple as possible for, for our customers through the Intelligent Workforce platform. And what we're doing is we're creating, ideally, a single integration point between the IWP or the Intelligent Workforce Platform and our client environments with the ATS or the VMS or the CRM or even the HCM. Uh, and then we build all the complexity of the further integrations of the point solutions into the Intelligent Workforce Platform, which means that it's a lot simpler for our customers. We only have to go through the integration process once. All the data is collected, protected, and, you, and, and, and stored, and then we can enable all the other features, whether we want to engage a video interview platform or an assessment platform or a, uh, any other sort of job posting aggregators, etc., all can have come within the platform, which means we have flexibility and we take a big headache away from our customers. Got it. Makes sense. So you've, uh, you've ever seen workforce tech integrations in five continents and 150. I'm surprised your hair isn't a lot grayer. Um, <laughs> can, can you explain the global challenges, let's say, when you think about an approach like the Intelligent Workforce Platform and applicability in country by country, does that, is that an insurmountable headache or what, you know, what would your comment be around that? It is, it is a headache. Let's not pretend that it's, that this is an easy problem to solve. I think we've got a, a multidimensional problem here with, with, uh, with global organizations and a global technology solution, but it doesn't mean that we can't solve it. So I think the, the awareness of Many, many organizations will have different ways of operating in different regions and different rules that we have to adhere to in those, in those different regions. Right. And I think the one thing that we are starting with first to try and resolve that is to ensure that our, our data and our compliance processes are, are as rock solid as they can be and really getting into the detail about where data needs to sit, 
who needs to be informed about what and which uh, uh, privacy statements, et cetera, are, are shown to which candidates at the right mm-hmm. time. That really allow, allows us to be first and foremost secure that the client's data is protected and we have uh, a solid basis on which to, to move on. I think the, the flexibility of the integration approach that we're taking also makes that a lot easier um, because where clients will have oftentimes maybe a local CRM or, or a local VMS or something, um, we are trying to make, as I said, those integration points as simple as possible. And and where we have um, those situations, we can reuse integrations we've done before. We have a, a, a cloud integration partner, which allows us to be very flexible, right. which is integrated with core ATSs and, and VMSs across the market. Uh, and that makes us a, a lot more agile in that space. So it is a challenge. I, I can't say there's a, there's a silver bullet that comes in and just fixes that for everyone. But also the challenge can be can be on the client side as well to try to look at how how, they, how much they can standardize. Can we start to work on global systems and, and introduce that? And then through that, we'll have obviously better engagement with, with the Intelligent Workforce platform as well. Right. But it sounds like what you were saying earlier, the size of the prize is certainly worth the pain. Let's put it that way. Absolutely. And, I, and you know, I guess with open APIs now, some of this wouldn't have been possible a few years ago. It would have been a lot harder, of course. So hopefully that, that will, um, as organizations become more agile through the digital transformation that most companies have been through, um, that should alleviate some of, that, some of those challenges. So as we think about that, um, and you get your crystal ball out um, in a few years. It sounds like this is this platform. Obviously, you're building it. You know, probably you probably never stop developing like any good tech, right? But what do you think will be some of the key elements or the differences in three to five years compared to today? Yeah, it's a good it's a good question and something I've I've talked about a couple of times. And I think it's very inspiring for me to think about this because the the, the market has evolved so incredibly quickly over the last um, two decades. And you think about the number of the amount of investments gone into the products over that time right. and, and how much we've seen change. But as I said at the beginning, we're still fundamentally doing the same thing. It's trying to match candidates to jobs. And, uh, and the, taking that to the level down, as, as I said, will be a, a key differentiator in the future where we're doing tasks to skill matching. But I think the other um, element, which I think we'll see some clear daylight between companies and, and their competitors, is those that are truly adopting a future thinking approach around hiring for potential alongside the traditional way of, of recruiting. And I think that is going to be a differentiator. There is a, um, a lot of talk right now, and we all know the challenges that we're in a talent short market. There's the great resignation. There's, there's lack of, lack of talent availability everywhere. Um, but I believe a big challenge that we have is that we're all still fishing in the same pool and we're all fighting over the same candidates using the same tools, looking for people with the skills and experience that, that are housed on their, on their resumes. Um, but there's a whole pool of candidates, I believe that have been excluded from, from our, from our talent pools in, in, in the past because of the way that the technology and the recruitment behaviors happened. Uh, and these are candidates that have wonderful numerical reasoning, leadership and problem solving skills to name a few, uh, but due to various socioeconomic factors, haven't been able to get the formal qualifications or get those really great c- companies on this, on their, on their resumes. Um, and that really holds them back. So if we're able to open up our, uh, our recruitment to these channels and, and be creative with the hiring process, factor in L and D into the picture and, and build career paths for this group of people, we all, I believe we'll have access to a greater talent pool um, than we currently have to today. Great, and hopefully the talent shortage will drive that um, very noble cause. That's great. Thank you. Thank you for that insight, Ian. So um, that brings us to the end of our time. Um, thanks so much for today. You really enjoyed the conversation. Thanks, Ian. Thanks, Bruce. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe, rate, and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And if you have questions, please send them to subject to talent at elitistglobalsolutions.com. Follow us on LinkedIn with the hashtag subject to talent and learn more about AGS at elitistglobalsolutions.com where you can find additional workforce insights and past episodes. Until next time, cheers.